Who are numismatic dealers? Good guys or they are just people who wish to take advantage of you and squeeze the money from you. Should you trust them or maybe not? See in today's video. Hello, my dear numismatic and phalaristic friends. I'm Zlatko Viscevic and you are watching Numistube, a channel specialized for coins, banknotes, orders and medals. You can follow us on YouTube, Facebook and other social networks. As you can see from the title, I'll talk today about numismatic dealers. Whatever I say about numismatic dealers in this video, it can also apply to other dealers, I mean to other collectibles dealers, including dealers of orders and medals as well. In today's video, I'll present you my point of view, how I see numismatic and collectibles dealers. And I'll go through different topics so that we can see numismatic dealers from various perspectives. Who are numismatic dealers? Numismatic dealers are people who are making money from coins and banknotes trade. This means that they buy coins and banknotes for less and they sell them for more and they use this profit as their source of income. I will go now through several topics so that you can see what kind of dealers can exist for different kind of topics, different way of doing the business. Time. There are full-time dealers, part-time dealers and occasional sellers. Full-time dealers, they are 100% in numismatic business. This numismatic business is their main source of income and they work full-time in this numismatic business. Part-time dealers, they are only partially in numismatic business. Numismatic business, in this case, is their additional source of income. They have their main job, their main business, which is their main source of income, and numismatic business is something additional. And they don't work full-time in numismatic business. There are also occasional sellers. They are similar to part-time dealers, but they don't see this uh, trading, uh, this selling as a professional activity. They do it from time to time and they are mostly active online or small local fairs. Regarding the size of the dealers, there are large dealers, medium-sized dealers, small dealers and micro dealers. Large dealers, they are large numismatic companies with a lot of employees and a lot of coins and banknotes in their stock. They have also a long list of their clients. As I told, they have a lot of coins and banknotes in their stock and usually they have a high level coins and banknotes in their offer. These numismatic companies, they have a large number of professionals fully engaged in the business. These large dealers, they can operate as a dealers, as a stores, but they can also be a large auction houses. Auction houses, they work on the way that they put items, coins and banknotes on auction. People are bidding on this item and the winning bidder, he wins the item. On this way, on auctions, they can sell their own coins and banknotes, but they can also take coins and banknotes from their clients and sell them to other clients and they take percentage from the buyer and they take the percentage from the seller and this is the way how they make money. Medium-sized dealers, they are generally medium-sized companies with some medium level of coins and banknotes in offer. They usually consist of uh, some uh, numismatic partners and their employees or they have several but smaller number of numismatic professionals and employees. They make a good turnover in coins and banknotes trading, but they don't make millions. Uh, they can also be a small auction houses. Small dealers, they are usually one or two man bands. Uh, they operate on the numismatic fairs, smaller numismatic fairs, or they sell online. They can also be part-time or full-time dealers. Micro dealers, they are usually people who are not too much professionally involved in numismatics. They are like uh, occasional sellers. For example, they are street sellers or flea market sellers. Regarding the store types, they are brick and mortar stores, online stores or dealers without premises, and there are auction houses. 
brick and mortar stores, they are like any other store. They have a business premises. They are usually in the street or in some office building. You can come to these premises. You can sit down and you can see their offer in person. There are something like between antique store and jewelry store. This way of doing business is common for full-time dealers. Online stores, stores without premises, they mostly deal online. You can't come in person and check the items by yourself because they operate mostly online or on numismatic fairs. This way of doing business is common for part-time dealers, but there can also be a full-time dealers who operate in this way. Auction houses, they operate in the way that they take coins or banknotes from the seller, they put it on auction and interested buyers, they come to this auction, they bid on these items or they bid online and the winning bidder, he gets the item. These auction houses, they make profit because they take percentage, a small percentage from the buyer and also small percentage from the seller. Auction houses, they are usually full-time businesses. Uh, they can have their own premises but they can be also without premises and organize auctions in some hotel or in some other premises. Regarding the clientele they serve, they can be wholesale dealers and retailers. Wholesale dealers, their clients are primarily other numismatic dealers. They sell uh, large quantities of coins and banknotes by lower prices. And as I told, usual clients are numismatic dealers, retailers, who buy a larger number of coins and banknotes from these wholesale dealers and they sell it for a larger price. However, the case here is that they have to buy, these retailers, they have to buy a huge quantity of coins and banknotes and quite often a large number of same coins and banknotes, for example, in bags, in bundles. And in this way, they get special discounts or they have to spend a larger amounts of money by these wholesale dealers. Normal collectors, so final buyers, they can't buy from wholesale dealers because these deals don't make sense for them. They don't need a larger quantity of the same coin or banknote. Retailers, their main clients are collectors, the final buyers. Uh, there is no some minimum level of quantity you have to buy. Uh, you can buy only one coin or one banknote which you miss in your collection and uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money if you don't want. However, when you buy from retailers, you pay the final market price, which is price for collectors. If you like this video so far, if I provided you with valuable information, please like the video, share it among your numismatic colleagues and also subscribe to this channel and follow the page. Regarding the prices, there can be expensive dealers, moderately priced dealers and dealers with low prices. When I talk here about expensive dealers, I don't mean on dealers who sell expensive coins and banknotes. I mean here on dealers who sell coins and banknotes by prices significantly higher than the average market price for these coins and banknotes. Their strategy is higher profit and smaller and slower turnover. Some of these dealers, they say that they pay much more attention on service rather than the value of the coins and banknotes. These sellers, they have much more interesting and much more nicer stories for their clients. They are selling stories like a special buying experience, special packaging, a VIP treatment, then a nice premises, where you sit down and there are hostesses around, you get the special drinks and everything is on somehow, let's say, high level. Usually the coins and banknotes they sell, they have these special boxes or special holders. These dealers, these companies, they have usually uh, luxury equipped uh, stores, luxury equipped premises, uh, they are uh, on the main street or on the main square, mostly in well-visited touristic cities. Their clients are mostly tourists or unexperienced collectors who get easily impressed with all these surroundings, with all these premises, this special treatment, holders, boxes, hostesses, drinks, etc. I visit a number of these dealers uh, 
as I told before, they are usually in main touristic cities. I can remember one, the last one I visited, it was in uh, one European capital. It was a city with a lot of tourists, with a lot of visitors. Uh, it was a brick and mortar store uh, on the main street and he offered their uh, coins and banknotes and orders and medals and the prices were extreme, uh, extremely high prices. Uh, items there were extremely overpriced. Uh, if you are a collector and if you have some, let's say, basic knowledge about collecting how to buy uh, coins and banknotes, you can buy maybe for a 30% of the price this seller had in uh, his store. But I understand uh, it is a high street, uh, probably the rent costs a lot and there are a lot of tourists, uh, there are a lot of unexperienced, accidental buyers who came in, they like the item, they buy it without thinking too much what is the real market price. There are people who buy on this way. Uh, maybe uh, they get disappointed when they come home. Maybe they never find out that they overpaid for this item. But okay, this is the way these dealers are doing their business. When you buy such overpriced uh, items in this way, you have to understand that majority of price here is not uh, the price of the coin or banknote. The majority of price is this uh, service, uh, packaging, uh, hostesses, whatever is uh, around this uh, selling process. Price of the coins and, and banknote is maybe 10 or 15 percent of the whole price you pay. We can compare these businesses, we can compare these dealers uh, with uh, expensive restaurants on uh, top touristic locations uh, where they serve let's say uh, normal food normal meals but the price is uh, extremely expensive because this is a top location and you can get this food by significantly lower price by some moderate prices uh, but it's not top location but if you wish to eat good food, okay, you go there and you go to these restaurants which are not on the top locations, but they serve you food, uh, they serve you meals by some moderate prices. If you go to top location, you will pay extra money for this location, not for the food. I can't really say that I recommend uh, buying from this kind of sellers, this kind of dealers, and here is the reason why. Uh, when you buy coins, when you buy uh, banknotes, uh, it's also some kind of investment. And if you overpay for the coin or banknote, you come home and you check online and check in numismatic literature. And when you see that you paid, I don't know, four, five times more than you're supposed to pay, then you feel a bit frustrated and uh, you feel somehow tricked uh, and some, uh, somehow cheated. And if you really want to buy uh, coins and banknotes and uh, keep in mind that it's also an investment, in this case it's much better to buy by uh, real numismatic dealers who have moderate prices. So moderately priced dealers, uh, they sell by average market prices. By these dealers, they know exact numismatic prices, they know the market prices. And by these dealers, you can't get a good coin or banknote by a low price. And also, you will not overpay for coin and banknotes. So you will pay some average market price. If you pay higher price, you will get usual explanation why in this case, the price is a bit higher than the average market price. These dealers, they have a moderate level of profit, but they have also a moderate turnover. These numismatic dealers, they are much more oriented on the real collectors who have experience in numismatics and they know what they are searching for and they know what is their average market price and how much they can pay. So they tend to have business with experienced collectors who know what they're actually buying. And then there are uh, low price dealers. Their policy is a smaller profit, but high turnover. They can be wholesale dealers, but they could also be a retail dealers, but with significant number of uh, other dealers as their clients. So they have a uh, small prices, small profit, but high turnover.
These dealers, they usually sell on fairs or they sell online, but they can also have a brick and mortar stores as well. Regarding the numismatic knowledge, there can be highly specialized experts, then the dealers with some general numismatic knowledge and dealers uh, or sellers without numismatic knowledge at all. Highly specialized experts, they are highly specialized in specific numismatic fields or in several numismatic fields. They know a lot about numismatic field, which is their field of expertise. They know all these small details, uh, small secrets uh, regarding this field. They know a lot about the market, about the market prices, and they are usually up to date all the time. We can say for them that they are high level professionals. They are then dealers with some general numismatic knowledge and I can say majority of dealers, majority of numismatic dealers, they fit into this category. They have general knowledge about numismatics, how to buy, how to sell, uh, about the grading. They know how to use numismatic literature, numismatic sources, how to use catalogs. They understand how numismatic world works what the buyer wants and how to sell them. But at the end, they are not specialized in any particular numismatic field. And then there are numismatic dealers, we can say sellers with really small numismatic knowledge or no numismatic knowledge at all. They are dealers, they are sellers without numismatic background. They don't understand how numismatic world works, but they know how to sell. These sellers, they often, they don't know what they are selling, but they ask for advices, uh, experienced sellers, experts. Uh, these people can be, for example, flea market sellers or street sellers. They can also be a bullion dealers who buy and sell precious metals, uh, gold and silver. They don't have this uh, numismatic knowledge, but they know, you know, the purity of the metal, they know the uh, weight, and they know how to calculate the price how much they can pay and how much they can get for this uh, silver coin or gold coin, whatever they buy or sell. Regarding honesty and ethics, there are honest and ethical sellers, there are uh, partially honest dealers and there are total swindlers. Honest and ethical dealers, they are honest in business they do and they maintain a high ethical standard in their business. They believe in fairness in numismatic business. They will not in any way misrepresent you the coin or banknote. So they will not say for the fake coin that it's original coin. They will not misgrade the coin or banknote. They will not misrepresent the coin or banknotes grade. They will not falsely represent you coin or banknotes rarity. Their prices are generally moderate. And if there is a, in some cases, higher price for a specific coin or banknote, in this case, you get a real explanation of why is this item more expensive than the average. These dealers, they wish to keep their clients informed about hobby and they share their knowledge with their clients. In this way, they wish to keep their clients satisfied with their service and they wish that their clients are satisfied with collecting. These kind of dealers will not take advantage of inexperienced collector or novice collector. There are these dealers which are, let's say, partially honest dealers. They are in 99% fair dealers, but in 1% they go to the dark side. So majority of deals they make are good deals, fair deals uh, with original items, with uh, fairly priced items, but in some cases they take advantage of some people and they sell fakes or they overprice the items they sell. For example, I know dealers who are okay with experienced buyers, with experienced collectors, but they change their behavior when they have business with unexperienced buyers and they take advantage of them. Not all the time, but from time to time. I have seen these cases when uh, reputable dealers, uh, dealers uh, who had some uh, reputation in the community, who have uh, some uh, uh, long experience in numismatic business, they intentionally sell fakes to their clients. And I remember one story, it happened a few years ago, when one of my colleagues, I was really surprised to see this, he sold a fake banknote 
and I know that it's a fake banknote, he knows that it is a fake banknote, he sold this fake banknote to one of his clients. And this client was asking me later, uh, what do I think about this banknote? And it was really unpleasant situation, it was an unpleasant case. I was shocked when I heard who sold him this banknote. But these are the cases which happens. I asked myself uh, in many cases, so why is this happening? Or why these people are making these risky moves? Because today in the era of internet, of fast communication, and uh, you know, these things can be easily discovered. And I was thinking why somebody who has some reputation in business is making things like that. Uh, there are various reasons. Maybe they think that nobody will find out. Maybe they think that this is some kind of client who will come once. Uh, maybe he is some foreigner. He will come once. He will buy this. He will overpay or he will buy fakes and he will leave and he will not return uh, anymore in uh, his store. Or there are some real cases when the dealers who have a business for a long time, they found themselves in financial troubles, they don't have enough money, uh, and they don't know how to get money fast, uh, or in, mo in this moment they don't have a good items to, to sell, and they sell some fake in order to get money fast. You know, as I told before, in today's uh, era of fast communication, uh, of um, networking, the high level of networking among the people, it's really a bad move and it's really a disastrous move to make if you are a numismatic dealer and if you are, wish to develop a long-term business. There are also uh, reputable auction houses uh, which have a large turnover, which uh, sell a lot of coins and banknotes. From time to time, they have fakes listed on their auctions. And some of these fakes are coins, mostly coins, who has been sold previously on some other auctions. And in this case, some fake coin, it gets legitimized if uh, it was sold on several auctions. But no matter that, it's still fake. And these auction houses, they know that this is a fake coin. Also, there are cases when auction houses, they misrepresent coin or banknote, or they don't mention some important data. For example, uh, one colleague, he showed me recently one case, uh, it was case of one ancient gold coin. It was sold on uh, one auction. It was sold as hold coin, as damaged coin. And after a few years, another auction house sold the same coin, but now repaired without hole. It sold it as a, a normal coin without damage, without mentioning that it was a hold coin before and that was repaired in the meantime. And, you know, this auction house, they knew what they're actually selling, but they didn't mention it, that this was before and, uh, undamaged, but later repaired coin. So this is also one sample of dishonesty in business and what some of the auction houses they make in their business. Then there are total swindlers, uh, like in every other business, numismatic business is not an exception. We also have a lot of swindlers, a lot of cheaters in this business. So there are dealers here who are completely unethical and they will take advantage of anyone in any case as soon as they have opportunity to do so. False representation of anything, it is their business model. However, they are really good, they're excellent in storytelling. And these stories, they attract a number of clients and they remain loyal to these dealers for a long time. And they are even defend them from the attacks of some normal collectors. You know, uh, when a collector, when he buys coins and banknotes from a specific dealers, and he's doing this for a longer time, he developed this uh, feeling of trust towards this seller. And he starts to behave on the way that he is not checking the items by himself. He trusts completely to the seller. And it's really dangerous if uh, collectors have this level of trust with a dealer who is not honest. Because in this way, these dealers can uh, sell everything, whatever they want to these collectors, and they will trust them no matter what.
after some time, these buyers, these clients, they maybe have this feeling that something is wrong, but this relationship is too long. They bought uh, a lot of coins, a lot of banknotes, and they are not willing to admit that they made mistakes that these deals they had with these dealers, they are total loss for them. Some collectors, they realize this after some time, but some uh, collectors, they never admit that they are basically tricked, despite the fact that deep in their mind, they know that they are actually tricked and that they were buying stories for this long time. There is this special kind of swindlers. I call them stupid sellers because they behave on the way they are selling something. They are selling some coins and banknotes and they are behaving on the way. Uh, you know, I don't know what it is. I don't know if this is a genuine or fake. You know, I purchased this from some old granny and uh, but you know I'm not really a, an expert. Maybe it's original, maybe it's a fake. The price is like this. It's a good price. You know, I paid 100 euros, 100 dollars. I want 120, 130 for me. If you will buy it, you decide. You know, you decide if this is uh, original or not. And they do this intentionally with unexperienced collectors. And in this way, they try somehow to limit their responsibility because they say, okay, I don't know if this is original or fake. But in this way, since it's done uh, intentionally and since it's done intentionally with unexperienced collector, it's also one kind of a fraud and dishonest behavior. Regarding the behavior, they are nice and polite dealers, they are falsely nice and polite dealers, and there are total arrogant and rude dealers. Nice and polite dealers, they are usually high-level professionals, they are always helpful, they are always willing to share their knowledge, and they are always willing to explain to their clients what they are actually buying, and how much they can pay for this, what is the average price. They really wish to keep their clients informed and they wish that their clients have a good experience in this buying process and in general collecting. They behave on the same way to you, no matter will you buy or will you not buy, because they are thinking, okay, if you don't buy now, maybe this is not your field of collecting, maybe you will start collect these coins and banknotes in the future and you will come to them because you will remember that they were polite. Or maybe they realize that you don't have money at the moment, enough money to afford this. Maybe in the future you will have money, you will come to them and buy because you will remember that they were nice, friendly, polite. And um, this, is, um, this is the professional way uh, and this is the, how uh, every dealer should behave. There are then uh, falsely nice and polite dealers. These are dealers who will behave in the same way as uh, in previous case. But when they see that you will not buy, they become extremely rude, extremely arrogant. In some cases, they insult the clients because they get frustrated with the fact that they spent some time with the client, which at the end or was not client and at the end he didn't, he didn't buy anything and it was completely a waste of time and they get frustrated, angry with this. But okay, this is the way the business works. Sometimes people buy, sometimes they don't buy. I remember in my case, I know people for years, they never purchased something from me. But after some time, when they start working or maybe they get a better job, and maybe they made some money in private business. And then after some, after a few years, they start spending and spending, uh, let's say, okay amounts of money. So in this, in this business, people have to be patient. It's really bad when the uh, dealers start to behave rude to you because you will not buy anything. Arrogant and rude dealers, they are arrogant. They are really rude toward the clients. These dealers, they don't know how to do the business, but there are cases that these dealers, they have a really good items, they have a really good coins, really good banknotes, expensive coins, expensive banknotes, and they think in the way, you know, I don't need collectors, I don't need those clients, they need me. 
they will approach me because they know that I have a good staff and they have to tolerate in one way uh, my behavior uh, and I don't have to pay attention how I will act, how I will behave towards these clients. These dealers, these arrogant dealers, they usually have this attitude, uh, you know, uh, I know better than you, uh, I'm much more experienced, uh, I have a, a good coins, good banknotes. They always behave uh, towards other uh, dealers, uh, other colleagues. They behave in the way that they try somehow to humiliate them and, that they, and they say uh, something like, you know, you are not on, on the same level as I am. Uh, I'm somebody, you are nobody, and uh, and things like that. My advice is just to avoid these dealers, no matter uh, the fact that they have a good and uh, 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 really interesting items. If they behave rude, basically they don't deserve your money. Then there are dealers, or we can say sellers, which behave like garbage dealers. Uh, they uh, are usually uh, sellers without uh, numismatic knowledge and uh, also people without manners uh, they treat their coins and banknotes like garbage and everything uh, is in total mess uh, by them and they know they don't know how to behave they behave uh, really rude really arrogant they are like garbage dealers and they treat you in the same way <laughs> like you are a garbage collector they can be really aggressive uh, this, you can find these people uh, uh, in the street, they are selling coins in the street, or there can be a flea market sellers. Usually you can find them there. At the end of this video, I have uh, some practical advices for you, especially if you are a novice collector or you don't have so much experience in the collectibles world. Trust. Numismatic business is like every other business. And numismatic dealers are like every other dealers and other professionals. There exist good professionals, good dealers, but that there also exist a bad professionals, bad dealers. In your general life, you probably have uh, dealers and professionals to whom you are a regular customer, like your doctor, your dentist, your hairdresser, your mechanic, your gardener, just name it. You establish some connection with these uh, professionals, you establish some level of the trust with them. If they recommend something to you, you will trust them, you will uh, buy something they suggest, or you will take some service because, as I told you, trust them and you don't need any additional checking of the things they say to you. The same thing is with numismatic dealer. Uh, you have to have your own numismatic dealer or several numismatic dealers to whom you trust. You have to be sure that these people will sell you genuine coins and banknotes, that they will provide you with proper advice when you plan to buy or sell something, and that you can rely on them uh, as you can rely on any other professional you have business with. However, don't forget and keep in mind that you don't take everything that is said to you for granted, and that you always have to have your brain turned on. Your numismatic knowledge is really important. Don't rely 100% on something what somebody tells to you, even if it's a trusted dealer. There can be various cases. For example, dealer can make a mistake. Dealer can go crazy after some time. He can be okay in majority of deals. You can have business relations with him for years, but after some time, something happens in his life for example, his business goes bad and he uh, at the end ends up without money and in this moment he starts taking advantage of his clients. And I remember once this happened, uh, it was a reputable dealer and he uh, served a lot of clients for many years. He was 20 years in business and he ran out of money. He was almost bankrupt in one moment and in this moment he started cheating his clients and he cheated basically all of his clients. He was selling fake coins and there were graded coins and the coins were fake and these slabs were fake. And he was selling a lot of these fake coins and this ended up terribly for him because he ended up in the jail and he couldn't return the money and it was also a bad story for his clients. 
These, these are real stories and they can happen in every moment. Also, you can be in business with, with somebody for a years and you think that this is a reputable dealer, that this is an honest dealer, but at the end, he is a swindler. I know a certain number of collectors who believe that some people are real and honest and ethical dealers, but I know that they are basically swindlers. These dealers, they sell fake items, fake coins, extremely overpriced coins for years. To be precise, they don't sell 100% fakes. They make a mix of good coins and bad coins, good banknotes and fake banknotes. So in 95% or 90% they are selling genuine coins, but 10% or 5% they are selling fakes together with these genuine coins. I don't wish to scare you here or to make you paranoid. The idea is that you have to think with your own head all the time, especially if you are investing a lot of money in your numismatic collection. So be informed about the coins and banknotes you collect, study them, read numismatic books, read numismatic magazines. Please be informed about coins and banknotes you collect. Ignorance is your worst enemy here and knowledge is your best friend in collecting world. My advice is to use your life experience in collecting. Majority of rules which apply in your general life or business, they also apply in collecting world. The story is a bit different, but the principles stay the same. For example, are you cautious uh, how do you spend your money in your real life? Or you throw money just without thinking? What will happen if somebody approaches you with some crazy offer. For example, you're walking on the street and you see a Bentley or Ferrari and somebody approaches to you, some random guy, and he tells you, would you like to buy this car? This is my car. Uh, I will sell it to you for, I don't know, $2,000 or 2,000 euros. And you say, uh, oh my God, okay, you just take out money out, pay to this guy, and you say, yeah, yeah, this is, okay, great deal, thank you very much for this great deal, and you don't ask for the keys, that you don't ask for the documents, you don't ask for the proof of ownership, you buy like this. Of course, if you're a reasonable person, you will never do things like this. What would you think in this case? That maybe this is a joke, it's a fraud, it's some kind of scam, you know, if you are reasonable, you will think in this way. You have to apply the same principle in collecting. The question is, do you trust anybody or you have some critical thinking and you filter this information and you don't believe everything what you hear? You know, some people, when they enter a collecting world, they somehow forget everything what they have learned in their life before and they start to behave like that they don't have life experience at all. And this is quite strange to me because uh, you have to think all the time and you have to apply experience from your life, from your general life. You have to apply to every other field you are involved in. Uh, for example, in this case, in collecting. And don't do moves in collecting world you wouldn't do in your general life. So keep your brain turned on all the time. Thank you for watching this video. I would like to hear about your experience with numismatic dealers, uh, your stories. You can freely share them in the comment section. You can write, uh, what do you think about dealers? Did you have positive or negative experience? Uh, you can share this information with me and other people who are following this channel. If you like this video, if you like this channel, no matter platform you use, uh, uh, YouTube, Facebook, or some other social network, please like the video, share it. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel or follow this page. You can find also some additional information in the description of this video. I wish you a happy collecting and see you in next video.